Hey there, welcome to another edition of Ask Ron. Got the idea for uh, the main topic, or the first topic today, from uh, old ass muscle fitness. I have a, a big crate of old muscle mags and muscle fitnesses and some other assorted magazines that a uh, guy from my hometown gave me. Well, I'll say it was about a year and a half, two years ago now. And uh, some interesting stuff when you read these. Um, first thing that was kind of interesting was there was an article by Ray Mentzer who is or was the younger brother of Mike Mentzer. They, they died a day apart uh, a while back. Uh, they were both Mr. America winners. Mike was obviously the better known of the two. You know, he had the heavy duty training system, uh, went to the Olympia a couple times, retired pretty prematurely, but he was very well known for his writing and uh, basically for formulating the heavy-duty training system. But his younger brother, Ray, was was a very good bodybuilder in his own right, you know. Just unfortunately, he was in the shadow of Mike. So he had an article called What About Anabolics, where he talked about steroid use. And uh, since I know, even though this isn't the main part of the com conversation we're having, a lot of people are going to want to know, well, what was he taking? Uh, and rather than me have to type that out, I'm going to read it to you to start things off. Eight weeks before the America... I started my steroid program with a 25 milligram injection of Durabilin, normally a weekly dosage, every four or five days. <coughs> I believe he means Deca Durabilin. I also took an initial 100 milligram injection of Deca Durabilin, a monthly dosage, and three Dianabol tablets a day. During the next six weeks, I gradually increased my dosage as I built my Durabilin injections up to 60 milligrams every fourth to fifth day. I took only one more 100 milligram injection of Deca Durabilin. About five weeks before the competition, I slowly increased my Dianabol dosage to seven tablets, which I believe back in those days, uh, it was the brand name Dianabol, manufactured by SIBO, which came in five milligram pills. So he was doing a whopping 35 milligrams a day, which, you know, bikini girls do now. Uh, he says, I didn't take this steroid Dianabol every day. I took it every second or third day, and I didn't stay at seven tablets very long. Because of the bloating effect Dianabol has on my body. Talks about how he stopped all the drugs 12 days before the contest. Uh, and here's the kicker. He says, I was perhaps 1 to 2% bigger and 1 to 2% harder looking from my steroid program than if I hadn't taken the drugs. 1 to 2%. Of course, I won my Mr. America title to go with the one my brother Mike took in 1976. For me, using steroids for the Mr. America contest was worth the risk. So the position, this is 1980, so we're talking about 38 years ago. Uh, the position officially back then was that steroids didn't actually do anything. They were kind of a placebo, which obviously no one would be, nobody would try to get away with saying that today. That's ridiculous. They're very powerful drugs. They have effects. But just to give you an idea, in the same issue, there was a woman, a women's bodybuilding article, which women, the pictures of women, it's ridiculous. They were smaller than almost any bikini competitor now they barely had any muscle but here's the here's the interesting thing in there is going back to the position officially back then even in the magazines so this was an article written by bill dobbins who's a photographer uh, he did a lot of writing for weeder magazines wrote a lot of books anyway he said still there's the matter of drugs it's no secret that some male bodybuilders take anabolic steroids there hasn't been any definitive research done on these men to prove that these drugs do what people think. After all, the male, hormone, the male body is so loaded with male hormones that the addition of more from the outside only causes the body to shut down its testosterone production. Nevertheless, many bodybuilders believe that steroids work, so they take them. Okay, well, I'm going to start right there because, yes, your production, your body does stop producing testosterone when you flood it with a lot of synthetic testosterone and its derivatives. You're, taking a lot of, you know, fake fake hormones, synthetically produced in a lab. Hopefully, most of you guys are using stuff that was made in someone's bathtub, but that's another issue. So, when you have uh, this gigantic amount of steroid in your system, yes, your own production stops, but that's it's silly to say that the effects, that means you're not going to get effects. Uh, obviously, we all know steroids work. They work very well. Otherwise, people wouldn't use them. All of you who have used them, you know, you looked different, you felt different, you were lifting more weight, you got better pumps, 
you had higher sex drive, uh, you put weight on the, you know, more water inside the muscle cells, uh, satellite cell formations, all sorts of theories, but you got bigger, you got heavier, you got stronger, fuller. Uh, drugs, steroids work, there's no doubt about it. So the question is how much, what percentage do they work? Obviously we know it's not one to two percent, but can we really put a number on it? No, because we're all different. And by that I mean we don't all respond the same way to steroids, if only that were true. I've seen cases where I knew people were using the same exact amounts of the same drugs uh, and it's because I was I happened to be in gyms at those times where everybody bought from the same guy and we would buy together so I knew this guy next to me was what he was using because we we bought it from the same guy we'd all get the big package we would divide it up pay it, whatever we knew we knew what everybody, everybody knew what everybody was on in that little gym in Pasadena California back in the 90s so that being said some people can take moderate amounts of steroids and just get amazing results. Some people can take very small amounts uh, and get great results. It's, it's a genetic variance. How do we respond to steroids? Some people also unfortunately can take tons and tons of steroids and they'll get a little bigger, a little stronger. Sometimes they'll get a lot stronger but not much bigger. You have to have the right genetics to look like a pro bodybuilder. There's this crazy misconception that anybody can look like a pro bodybuilder. Anybody can be so let's say uh, I'm 5'11", I'm 120 pounds. Big Rami is 5'11", and 350 pounds. Theoretically, if you listen to what some of these people tell you, uh, you can be that Big Rami size if you're just willing to take enough drugs. Uh, no, no, no. Most of you do not have the genetic potential to put on that amount of muscle mass. It doesn't matter how much, how many drugs you take for how long. And unfortunately, the more you take and the longer you take them, now you're getting a lot more risk for side effects and a lot more risk for long-term damage to your, your kidneys, especially if you have untreated high blood pressure, to your heart for sure. You're going to get that left ventricle growth. You're going to get the blockage in the arteries. There's a lot of bad things that can happen to you if you take a ton of steroids for a very long time. Some people luck out and, they, and they're okay. Other people, unfortunately, not, not so lucky. And we all hear those cases. Guys die, guys drop out of the sport for health reasons. Um, so somebody will always, somebody always wants to throw out numbers, especially natural guys. You know, I was a natural bodybuilder for many years, so I know the holier-than-thou, self-righteous sort of attitude that permeates a lot of these guys' thinking. And they'll say, oh, steroids are 90% of the physiques of those guys. Uh, or, or at least they'll, they'll, I don't think they ever ascribe a number lower than 50% to the success steroids play in a, uh, a drug using bodybuilder but the thing is and a lot of them will also have this belief that if they went on if these natural bodybuilders went on steroids they would be amazing pro bodybuilders uh, at the Arnold Classic and Olympia level now I have seen some natural guys go on steroids and become great bodybuilders in the non-tested federations NPC IFBB I've also seen a lot of guys who are put it this way if you have great genetics, you're going to be a great bodybuilder, whether you're natural or whether you're not natural. So if you're a shitty natural bodybuilder, if you have very little size, you have wide hips, narrow shoulders, short muscle bellies, just terrible, terrible genetics for bodybuilding. And there are a lot of bodybuilders out there, both natural and unnatural, who have horrible genetics. The, st the bone structure, which is the basis of everything, it's all wrong to begin with. You know, theoretically, you want wide clavicles, narrow hips, arms and legs that are just the right length. They're not too long, too short. But you get a lot of people with really wide hips, narrow shoulders, long legs and arms, or really short arms and legs. None of those look good. So you start with that framework, and then you don't have the right muscle shape, which is genetic. Like, your bicep is either peaked or it's not. There's no drug. There's no training program. It's going to give you a peak like Robbie Robinson or Arnold Schwarzenegger if you are not genetically inclined to have a peak bicep. And you're going to have a peak bicep whether that's 14 inches or 22 inches. It's either going to have a peak to it or it's not. Obviously, at 22 inches, the peak is going to be higher and fuller looking, you know, better, more prominent peak than if it's a 13, 14 inch arm. But the shape never changes. Muscle shapes don't change. 
so getting back to the numbers thing, people want to know, you know, what percentage do drugs play in the physiques of these guys? So it's impossible to say because we do have such genetic variation and such genetic variation as to how we all uh, react to the drugs and respond. Some people, like I said, will grow crazy. They will have excellent results from drugs. Uh, others, no, they won't. And it doesn't matter. I've seen a lot of the guys who don't have that response, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing higher and higher doses, and they just end up getting more side effects. They don't get a lot bigger. They get maybe a little bigger. Is it worth, you know, losing your hair, getting horrible gyno, acne, uh, looking 15, 20 years older than your actual age? Is it worth all that to be 10% bigger than you were on a more moderate dose? And that's what I see a lot of times. Uh, or, you know, like I said, if they, if they are able to put a good amount of size on, you can get to a certain point uh, as a bodybuilder with a lot of size and great conditioning, even if your shape's kind of wonky and your structure's not that great, until you get to the higher levels. Once you're at like the level of the USA, Nationals, North American, once you're, one, once you're at that level, you better have damn good genetics. All the drugs in the world aren't going to make you a champ if your genetics are average or below average. And you see it when you go to these shows. It becomes very clear. And I wish everybody could watch, say, the judging at the USA or Nationals of the men's light heavyweight or heavyweight class, because these are big classes. And all these people earned their right to get there. They placed uh, first or second, whatever the qualification thing is now, to, be, to get to the Nationals. So they all earned the right to be there. But that doesn't mean that they're all... Uh, created equal. They're, they don't all really belong there. And you'll see it right away. You'll see the guys who are really good, they stand out. They have that look. They have that shape with the big full round muscles, the little waist and the big shoulders, the flaring lats, the flaring quads. They look the way a bodybuilder is supposed to look. And then you'll have other guys who, mm, you know, they have muscle, but they, the shape's kind of, uh, it's not pleasing. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they'll, they work very hard. And this is something we're going to get to in a minute, too. They work as hard as possible to come in looking as good as they can. But it's a sport of genetics, unfortunately. So drugs certainly play a role. For sure they do. How hard you work, of course that plays a role. How hard you train, how consistent you are with your good eating, your sleeping. All that, all those factor in. But it's always going to come down to genetics because bodybuilding is judged visually. Um, so let me wrap up this component of what I was talking about before moving on. I, I would say if I could give a rough estimate how much bigger and better the average person can be naturally versus steroids, it's going to be somewhere between 20 to 50 percent. That's a big range, I know. So I know people love numbers. Let's say you're 180 pounds at 510 You've trained naturally for six or eight years. Your body fat's around 10 to 12%. You know, you can see your abs. You're not shredded. So let's say you're the 5'10", 180, you're natural uh, with, with, with some abs. You're not shredded, but, you know, you can see your abs. You can see some muscle separation. You've got a pretty good natural physique. Uh, let's say you, there's another person, exact same proportions, exact same numbers, height, weight, body fat. Um, let's say your response to drugs is not... The same as theirs they're one of those lucky hyper responders and i don't know what makes people some people respond so much better to steroids i really don't i don't know if anyone really knows because I, I doubt there's been any real study on it because why would the medical or pharmaceutical industry give a shit it, it doesn't affect anybody except us meatheads and it doesn't really affect us because it's you're born with whatever you're born with as far as receptivity and response to drugs but maybe you take uh, this cycle. So we got to we got to keep things equal. Let's say you both go on the same cycle for 16 weeks. Let's say you both go on uh, a gram of test and a gram of DECA, which is a very, very good amount. That's not a small amount of drugs. That's a substantial amount of steroids. Guy one goes from 180 at the end of the 16 weeks. Let's say he's 210 and a third of that is water, water and fat weight. It's pretty damn good, right? That that's about that's about typical. I see I see results like that on a first cycle for people that know what they're doing and they've had the, they know their bodies, they know how to train, they know how to eat. 
that's that's those aren't atypical results for someone in that situation. Person B who was a hyper responder, someone like that might go from 180 to 240. Yeah, in 16 weeks. 60 pounds. It sounds ridiculous. And again, a lot of that's going to be water and fat. I know some of you guys are shaking your head saying that's ridiculous. Maybe 240 was a bit high, but I'm going to stick with it just because that's an extreme example that somebody could put on 60 pounds in 16 weeks if they really pounded the food and they were taking a gram of real test and a gram of real DECA every week. So it's not fair, but what is fair? You know, some of us are short, some of us are tall. Some of us are good looking, some of us are ugly. Luck of the draw, guys. It's luck of the draw. Okay, so you really can't put a number on how much steroids help, but it's very, very safe to say uh, 1% to 2% is way, way too low of an estimation as to what difference they make. They make much more of a difference than that. Uh, next topic, because we just had the Junior Nationals, and I follow a ton of competitors on social media. My Instagram, I follow... I'm one of those people that somebody follows me, I follow them back. Um, so I follow a couple thousand people, a few thousand people. I don't even know how many people I follow. Does it say? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, I see them getting ready for shows. Like we had a local show in Connecticut yesterday, and we also had the Junior Nationals. And, uh, you know, a lot of them were posting every day, multiple times a day, most of them, how hard they were working, and nobody's going to outwork me, and I'm on the grind, and I'm this, and I'm that. Great. That's great. Um, so the attitude seems to be, or let's pose this as a question. Can hard work beat genetics? Uh, if genetics doesn't work hard, sure. So if you work really hard to prepare for contests, you diet very strictly, you get into excellent condition, you know, your genetics aren't that great, but you show up really prepared in sharp, sharp condition, you're going to beat people with better genetics than you who fucked off on their diet, skipped their cardio, and they, they can't really show the muscles that they really have. If those people were in shape, they would destroy you. They would destroy you. But if you're in shape and for whatever reason they didn't get in shape, usually you can beat a lot of those people. Sometimes if they're just a little bit out of shape, they're still going to beat you because they still do have everything else, the shape, the structure, the size, things that you don't have because you don't have the genetics for it. And uh, so I saw a lot of people that were definitely working really hard, getting ready for Junior Nationals in particular. Um, I could tell a lot of them, they really go hard, hard, hard on the drugs because, you know, they have to. I mean, they're, they're using every, every advantage they possibly can, and they know their genetics are not great, and they're going up against people with superior genetics at the national level. You're going to have those people. That's There's no way... Or, <laughs> Even though bodybuilding is getting smaller in terms of participation at times, you still have some really gifted genetic freaks out there all the time. And, um, yeah, so if someone has lesser genetics, they'll work very hard. They'll train their asses off. They'll diet super strict for, like, 16, 20 weeks. Uh, they will load up on, you know, every drug in the world, every peptide, every all the GH, the IGF-1, the insulin, the, every type of steroid, everything they can get their hands on and afford beg, borrow, and steal, whatever, they'll use that. So then the show show comes and happens, and they do, sometimes these guys, uh, girls, guys, they're able to beat, like I said, some of the genetic freaks. But the people with good genetics, better genetics, I should say, uh, as long as they show up in reasonable shape, they're going to win because it, it comes down to, how everybody looks compared to everyone else on stage day of the show with the panel of judges making the decisions, looking up at this lineup of heavyweights, light heavyweights, middleweights, uh, classic physique A, classic physique B. They're looking, at, they're looking at you compared to everyone else. Now, it doesn't matter that you worked harder or you dieted longer or, you know, maybe you post videos where you're barbell rowing 400 pounds, you're deadlifting 600 pounds or squatting, and, you know, that's very motivating. It's inspiring to people that follow you on your Instagram and your YouTube and all that. But does it really matter in the end when you're up on stage next to these other guys? It doesn't matter one bit. All that matters is what do you look like versus what they look like. Because the judges have a, a tough job. They have a lineup of physiques to look at. And they have a score sheet in front of them with the names and the numbers. And they have to assign a placing. Who deserves first place, second, third, fourth, fifth? 
uh, and at the national level, with the bigger the bigger shows, they only judge up to the top 15 because if you wanted a, a placing of 42 guys all the way from one to 42, you know these things would go on for days and days of judging because it's it's a pain in the ass. Um, so I fully applaud because you know I don't have the best genetics and I competed for many years and I still might compete again someday. I will work very hard and I know I have to work very hard because when you have uh, average genetics or maybe just a little above average but you're competing against these people who have that look with the round full muscles they look like bodybuilders you know anywhere they go people will be like there's a bodybuilder a lot of us with the lesser genetics people might go oh, that guy looks like he works out or he's a big dude but they're not gonna say wow that's a bodybuilder because that bodybuilder look with the really you know, I, I consider it like the comic book look with the really wide shoulders that are round and the lats that are flaring out and the little waist and the flaring quads. Not many people have that look. Uh, even at the, you know, if you go to the regional shows, you'll especially you'll see most people don't have that look. Uh, there are the ones that do very well, they do. And they move on to the national level. And that's where you see more of the people with that look. And once you get to the pros, almost all of them have that look, obviously. They, they advanced all the way up the ranks till they were pros and now they're competing against other genetic superiors who work very hard. So when you have people with great genetics that work hard, their results are always going to be better than someone with lesser genetics that works hard. And I, I sometimes get, I, I feel like I offend people with superior genetics at times and I don't mean to. I'm not saying that you don't work hard. And I, I've actually have had guys like come up, come up to me or message me saying, you know, you're saying I'm lazy, I don't work hard. I'm saying, no, I'm not saying that at all. Not at all. I'm just saying if two people do the exact same things uh, with their training, nutrition, the rest, and drugs, and one of them has much better genetics than the other one, he's going to look a lot better. That's just a fact. That's just the way it is. Is it fair? No. Well, none of this is fair. You know, this isn't that. That's what I think people, people get confused, especially now because we have so many newer competitors getting into all these divisions. They think if they really want it badly enough and they work really hard, they deserve to win. Nobody deserves to win unless you look better than everybody else. That's it. Bottom line. Nothing else matters. Nothing. I, I, I keep coming back to the analogy of fighting. Say you are, you're at a UFC fight. One guy knocks the other guy out within 20 seconds. Uh, the judge is going to confer and say, you know what? I was watching a video of both of these guys, how they trained for the show, and the guy that got knocked out, he trained so much harder. He's such a hard worker. You know, he really gave it his all getting ready for this fight, so let's make him the winner, even though he got knocked the fuck out. Of course not. They're never going to do that. And it's, it's the same thing in bodybuilding. You're not being judged on your merits. You're not being judged on what a nice person you are, how hard you worked, and the grind, and the struggle, and maybe you had to wake up at 3 in the morning to do your cardio and make your food for the day and get the kids off to school. And that's all commendable. It's great. It's inspirational that you're able to do all this. It has no bearing on the actual competition. This is an athletic competition. And I think that's what a lot of these newer people getting involved in it, they don't understand because they come, a lot of them are coming from this younger generation where there were participation trophies. Everybody was a winner. Maybe they played little peewee soccer and they didn't even keep score because they didn't want anyone's feelings to get hurt that they were the losers and the other team was a winner so everybody wins and there's no score just have fun and that's what a lot of people seem to think uh physique competition is it's supposed to be just fun and everyone should feel good and you know it's wow good for you you look great uh and that that's fine that you can you know be rewarded like that and feel good about yourself but these are competitions. These are whether you want to argue all day about whether bodybuilding and bikini and classic physique is it a sport or not. You can argue that all day, but it is a competition. That much is certain. There are awards given out, placings. One person wins. One person gets second, third, on down the line. At the end of the night, there's awards. Some people are winners. Some people are not winners. Some people don't place. Uh, and, you know, it's too bad everyone can't win, but... This is a sporting competition, whether you like it or not. So everyone can't win. Uh, you're not going to win just because you trained harder than everyone else or dieted harder because there's a huge genetic component involved in bodybuilding. Uh, if you have awesome genetics, 
and you work hard and work really hard, you're probably going to win. If you have shitty genetics, you're probably never going to win a contest unless you get really lucky and pick some tiny show where no one else shows up. But if you go to a regional, big regional show or, God forbid, a national show and you have bad genetics, your, your bone structure, your muscle insertions, all that is it's just not suited for bodybuilding or a physique or a figure, whatever it is you're doing. I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to leave uh, happy if you're playing to win. You can look at it as a personal challenge. This is the best I've ever looked. I feel great. And that's fine. Uh, and you know what? I think we, we need a lot of those people who have that attitude uh, because otherwise we wouldn't have these huge numbers at the shows and the promoters wouldn't be able to make a profit and keep putting the shows on. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be real with you guys and let you know uh, hard work does not beat genetics unless genetics doesn't work hard. If genetics works hard, genetics wins every effing time. Uh, I didn't. I don't. I don't mean to really, you know, discourage anybody. Like I said, if you know your genetics aren't the greatest, then you you're well aware because you're not a dummy that you can't change your bone structure and the shape of your muscles. And these things aren't going to change ever. You can become a bigger version of the same physique, but you're never going to look like these people with the awesome genetics it's just it's a different look that they were born they were destined from birth to be able to attain if they did everything in terms of training and diet and drugs and all that that physique was going to be brought out whereas for the rest of us for most people that physique is just never meant to be doesn't matter how long you train how hard you train how much you visualize it none of that really matters unfortunately that physique it's it's a special rare thing that type of physique that we see on the magazine covers uh, and that wins the pro shows. These people are, they're almost another species. That's how different genetically they are in terms of their muscles and how they respond to training and drugs and things like that than you and me. They're not the same. And, you know, as long as you realize that and you go into this with the right expectations and attitude that you can be the best you can be. And if you work hard, you probably will beat a lot of people with better genetics than you up to a point once you get to the higher levels where there's more and more people with great genetics and now they're working with coaches to guide them and they're all taking it very seriously yeah you've probably reached the end of the line as far as how far you're going to go as a bodybuilder or whatever type of physique competitor that you are so you know that's it i just want to give you a healthy dose of reality because uh more shows are going to happen shows happen every damn weekend and as long as you go into it with the right frame of mind, you're not going to be bitter or disappointed or at a loss as to why things went the way they went. Um, it's a visual sport judged on the way the bodies look, uh, day of the show. And you need if you don't understand how these contests are judged, you need to sit with some judging a judging panel sometime uh, or at least talk to some judges and understand what they're looking at, what they're looking for, because... Everybody can't win. There's an ideal type of physique for every division that they're looking for, and they're looking for the best overall package that embodies that. So for bodybuilding, it's who has the best combination of structure, size, shape, symmetry, balance, all these things, uh, condition, all these things factor in. The person who has the best blend of all of those so it's not always going to be the biggest person. It's not always going to be the most ripped person. It's not always going to be the person with the best shape. It's not. It's it's rarely the just the person who has the best of one thing. It's the person with the best total package. So it's been kind of a long one. I didn't mean for it to go this long. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Talk to you next time.